and we will close out today with Ryan Grigson, of course, the general manager here of the Colts from 2012 to 2016. Just experienced the playoff season with the Vikings, senior, senior vice president of player personnel up there in Minnesota. And this is, what, combine number 16, 18, 20? I think it's over 20 because you do the math. But I, I think I, I started coming here in 98. Didn't get invited as a player. Um, somehow managed to get drafted still. But, I, uh, yeah, so it's up there. I actually kind of want to start there, if you don't mind. I didn't even think about this. But, I mean, you certainly, from a medical standpoint, the combine would have been a huge deal for you, right? I, I don't know how it much you want to probably would have been a ne- big negative. How much you want to share. But it, it, yeah. if you don't mind sharing yeah. a little bit medically, like that's what yeah. this week is so much about. Yeah, it would have been good. I got been able to interview with people and things like that. But it was, uh, at the time, I broke my leg against IU the last game of my senior year, all right, against you suckers. And then then I ended up, um, and then I hurt my shoulders, so I couldn't bench, and I was actually a solid workout guy, so I couldn't really even do those types of things. So, uh, But I had a laundry list of, of injuries that happened from 1992 on, and prior to that, like, I literally, ne- I never had a twisted ankle, and I and I played three sports and played contact football since I was a little guy, So so I got hurt significantly my June my sophomore year I was in hospital like four weeks and uh was pretty sick and freak accident and then uh, but I started the next two years and still managed to get drafted I worked out for a handful of teams right before uh right right before um the, the last day that you could and I worked out for the Bengals on good Friday I'll never forget it the old line coach really liked me and drafted me and did that Having to go through that, like kind of the scrap and claw. Let me ask you this: the the the, the route you had to take, Ryan, to to become a player in the NFL, yeah. that scrap and claw, kind of having to prove yourself type thing. Did that approach and that journey more benefit you towards yourself for your career, or towards identifying that in other players that mm-hmm. you think are, are kind of underdogs that you can look at and say that's going to pan out? Yeah, that's really good stuff that, that, that's exactly both I think you hit both of them I think I uh, I think you're mellow with age but I think that I rode that wave early in my career trying to like because I've done every job since entry level combine scout to, to GM now that I've gotten this job so I've kind of rode that passion and just that chip my shoulder not a lot of guys go D1 out of the region for some reason it's like you just go across the border in the Chicago Catholic League and, and, and public league you know, the whole country's recruiting those guys. Right. And, uh, you know, so I was fortunate enough to, to get an offer from Purdue. And, uh, but with, with, uh, with that, I think that you can't be truly so, – you can't just draft overachievers, you know, or you're going to go 0-16 probably. So you've got to be able to see if you can pull it out of some really talented guys. And some guys that just roll out of bed and can play left tackle or rush the passer – I mean, those are the guys you want, but a lot of times they're the guys that don't go hard every snap. What does this week entail? I, that's what I thought you could really shed light on, <clears throat> because you've you know you've walked into this event wearing different hats over the course of your yeah. career. But does everybody have kind of a different role in terms of what they're looking for here within an organization, or, or you know how does it exactly work out? Role meaning, I, you know, does one guy does one guy say you know you say okay you you are in charge of going and listening to interviews you this you know jim you're in charge of watching tape you're in charge of watching bench press i mean what what oh, all yeah. what all goes into the disperse of responsibilities well, for an organization i mean everybody does it differently i think and every year the combine changes a little bit this is such a different event than it was 20 years ago i mean when i first got into this i worked for the combine and i was the club insert into into NFS National Football Scouting that's you know based here in Indianapolis with Jeff Foster and those guys, and I mean I literally the guy that was used to be the boss is a guy named Duke Babb that was on the first Cowboys team in Dallas and he was a tough old guy that literally I mean we used to come here and fold socks like for a week inch T-shirts he was super meticulous really made a great influence on me um, just about crossing T's dot and I's being super detailed accountable all those things and if you did one thing wrong if there was one thing in your report that wasn't copacetic it was marked in red and sent to you by fedex and you know that was a deal but from then till now i still think the bulk of it is 
the player interviews, the medical, and just seeing the players move. You're going to get the numbers. The drills have been, you know, they've been just worked on so much from the time the player season ends. You know, um, I, don't, I think people still look hard at some of them. Um, but to your question, there's so many different ways you can, you can kind of go about it. But we have so many employees now working on these things, and you have so many people that are kind of, they splice it up different ways. I mean, I think every team does it differently, but at the end of the day, I think most people look at the core things that are here, which is the numbers, getting your hands on the player, um, and then just seeing the players move in the drills. When you bring up numbers and you think about quarterback, obviously so much attention around Bryce Young and what he's going to mm-hmm. measure and at height and weight-wise. Let's say he's 5'11", 195. Mm-hmm. How concerning would that be for you? I think it depends on the team. Like if some people – there's some – teams that philosophically and how some of these GMs have been raised from certain you know teams and GMs and those trees that they just they don't touch anybody that's not height weight speed at certain positions so they're going to pass on the Barry Sanders they're going to pass is quarterback you know, usually one of those or, or do you look at it, a Russell Wilson you look at Drew Brees and you say well those are the exceptions but they those are new exceptions but isn't there a danger I've always heard Ryan there's a danger of you know there's always exceptions to the rule Yep. But aren't you safer going by the rule than the exception? <laughs> I'll tell you, that's just to be really blunt, I think it all depends, too, on where the head coach and that GM are in, their, in kind of their contract year and where they're at. Because if you, you're going to care a lot less about a guy's size when you put on the tape and he's blowing everybody else away in that class with his playmaking ability, his instincts, and just the way he throws the football. You're going to think less. So there's been guys that there's you have you have hard evidence now of smaller quarterbacks being able to play at a high level in this league. How much of a factor is it when you look at a prospect to look at the receivers he's thrown? In other words, if one guy is coming out of a marquee program, but he's thrown to three guys that are all going to be playing on Sunday, does that almost hurt his evaluation? Because you look at like a Josh Allen, for example, at Wyoming, and you go, okay, well look who he's throwing to, and yet he put up these numbers. I, th- I think you can you can look at that. Obviously, I don't get I personally don't get in the weeds on that too much. It's like saying, well, this guy had 16 sacks, but did you see the ta- left tackle? He had those sacks. Well, that's not his fault, right? You know. So I think like if a guy pops on tape, nice cheese at socks by the way. There, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got going. Sullivan's. You <laughs> yeah, had yeah. to stop at Sullivan's yeah. in your time here. I'm, yeah. I'm running home to get my credential. They let him in with cheese at socks. I got pr- Pringles <laughs> at home. Come that on, I try to try to rotate among yeah. the uh, food groups. Yeah, my first. Honestly, you say Sullivan's. My first. 49th and Penn, right there. My first. There's a Marriott right there, right? You talk. Oh no, no, no the no, hardware that's store. That's the one like Carmel. So there was a there was a Marriott in Carmel when I first got here in 2012. I stayed at the Marriott there for like a month until I got into this condo they put me up in here until my family moved like six months later. And there was a Sullivan's there. And, you know, I would leave, it would be dark. I would come back, it would be dark. And I had like one hour before they would close at Sullivan's. And I ate there literally no, every this night. Is a hard, he bought these at a hardware store, hardware. not the Sullivan's well, Steakhouse. Well, I wouldn't think you'd get Cheez-Its at Sullivan's. Correct. Your line of yeah. thought would be correct yeah. here. It's, yes, I'm still waking up. So Brussels sprouts and Cheez-Its on well, the side I, of the uh, What restaurant Sullivan's was menu? it a must that you – I mean, you're back. So you're like, okay, I'm here for the combine. We have to go eat where? Well, Shapiro's is, is numero uno for me. It's a – 12 minute walk from this from the Lucas Oil. <laughs> but who's timing it? So so uh, well, a lot of people are timing. You have to with this with how how we're just burying these interviews. I mean, you just you, going to the restroom or getting food is is, is tough. Um, but I hit Shapiro's. I want to get to Fat Dan's. Haven't yet. Of course, hit Pat at you like three times already. The original was like by my house. You can't beat that. Um, I hear this Tony's is really good, the steakhouse. Yeah, the, I haven't been there, but it's yeah. supposed to be good. Venture into Mama Carolla's or Ambrosia? Are you going to get that I, far north? I, I love, yeah, that was right in my hood there. That yeah. was that was a go-to. I would just hit the bar there. They're mussels, and I'm a fish snob. I've been out east on the water many times like throughout my career. It's kind of been home base, and, and their mussels there, and the broth is it's out of this world. Can't be beaten. You know, it, it's got to be interesting. I For you... I just saw actually yesterday the Vikings, they did like the player survey, and yeah. the Vikings got like yeah. straight A's in terms yeah. of like great organizations to be with. Yeah. So you're in a good place. You're in a good home, obviously, you're with a good franchise. Is it weird to be an indie? It was more weird, uh, you know, a handful of years ago. You know, it was more weird. Uh, but it's kind of, you know, it wears off. I think everybody has a 
kind of it takes everybody a little bit of time in this business um you know after you get let go and you when you come back to a place but it's my roots the thing is that people a lot of people don't understand is like my roots run much deeper than the colts i'm from indiana i met my wife went to purdue played at purdue i have so many teammates and friends we made in india that are still here there's just so many people that i'm you know they're still close to my family and i that you know it's 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 not that weird um you know coming to lucas oil um you know i just thought you know ty is not up there anymore so it's like you know that you know we had the game this year with with with, with the colts that you know the, the chapters that the chapters closed i mean it couldn't have been closed any better really you know i, I told you ryan ryan grigson's our guest here at the, at the scouting combine we told the story 20 times this morning about my nightmare this morning as I got here and realized I grabbed the wrong credential. And th- they were not going to let me in at all in any way, shape, or form. I had to drive. bad me. morning. <laughs> it was awful. Okay. So I- I'm-, I'm running to my car. It was a nightmare. I- is that kind of what the nightmare was when-, when you were down like 57 to nothing to the Colts this year? I- you guys end up winning that game, but. Yeah, it was. It was I mean, the NFL's, you know, obviously every game. You just never know, um, you know, what's going to happen. But obviously that was a monumental comeback. It's the greatest in NFL history. And, you know, you got four quarters of play. Like, I, <laughs> I've i lived it so much. We did, you know, we were down f- four scores, you know, with luck. And I think that, that was, at the time, the second greatest comeback in NFL history. So it's pretty cool that, you know, I've been part of both those things. And uh, it's also taught me to – that's why, like, most GMs, like, that – they never you don't ever send them a text like until it's zero 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 on the clock it just you just don't because you've lived through too many times of of either being on the right side or wrong side of that fence if you you can't jump the gun there's just the crazy things happen in this league and you know that game was it was incredible it was really incredible was that for you was that maybe the sign or the moment where you realized that that page had been turned because maybe emotionally it wasn't what it would have been three years ago or five years ago i mean like i would be a you know a fool like if if it didn't you know because if i'm being real i mean i'm a competitor i feel uh you know you know things didn't work out here you know we didn't win a championship that's what you're that's what you're measured on we had a head of hell of a quarterback i was charged with you know building a team to win it all and i don't think we could have been by the book on a better trajectory until year four, into year four. Um, but, you know, it's, that's life. You learn from it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I wouldn't trade it because what it taught me now going into these, new, these other roles I've been in, I think has been seamless for me because I'm just an open book and I'm shameless with the people I work with and it served me well. You, you talk about the trajectory heading into year four. What do you think changed? What, what do you think went a different way. Our quarterback got hurt. <laughs> I mean, that's it's that simple. Um, you know, we, you know, I also think it's, you know, I'm getting too far back into this deal. I think, uh, you know, when, when I think Hasselbeck was 40 at the time, and I mean, that guy couldn't have done a better job. I mean, he darn near took us into the playoffs and won a good number of games for us in, in Andrew's stead. And and you know he won those 16 straight division wins. That's that's the only ball I care about that I have for my time here, and or any of the, you know, any of the stuff I you know had, had gotten. You know that's that was something that was special for me. Yeah, you're not talking. I feel like that's probably what you're most proud of. And correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Is the 16 straight divisional wins. On the flip side of that, what would be maybe your biggest regret? You know, not putting together what would have won a championship. Because ultimately, uh, you know, that's what you're charged in doing. And you know was. You know, at the, your your older self is always something that you wish you could talk to your younger self. Um, but there's a lot of learning on the fly uh, at a young age for me, and you know I don't beat myself self up about it anymore. It's in the past. But uh, again, like a general manager's job is to take the bullets and to build the team. And uh, again, you know, I I never doubted that we'd win a championship. We didn't, and that's life. I think the thing. Uh, Ryan Grigson's our guest, and before we get back into, because I, I do have some questions about building a roster, like, you know, the challenges that takes place at the Combine, right? But tell me if this is a fair statement to kind of conclude, I guess, the, the talk of Indy. My guess would be that you're a guy that the, the most important things to you, aside from football, are you're a family guy that's an Indiana guy. Mm-hmm. And so 
Indianapolis was kind of by extension your family, and you wanted more than life itself to be able to deliver to everybody here. So then when it didn't happen, you know, you're thinking to yourself, look, like this, I'm still family though. Like why, why, like that's what's the challenge here is nobody wanted this more than I did for the people here because I'm one of them. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, I just don't think that was ever a connection that people made for whatever reason. And I think part of it is because you know, I wasn't a social butterfly with the media. And that wasn't how I was raised in this business. That, whether that's right, wrong, or, or a mistake, you know, I don't know, but that's how I was raised in it. And uh, my focus, and I'll never back off, it was about winning football games, doing whatever it took. That was my mindset, and I just really didn't veer off that. Whether it was, uh, you know, in hindsight, should I have talked to my agent and said, okay, on Tuesday, take an hour to talk to so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so. I, I just had ants in my pants. I couldn't. It was, it was hard for me to, 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 to kind of, like, stop and do those types of things. Well, what's the hardest thing about just, like, at the Combine, what's the hardest thing to, to determine of a prospect? Like, when guys are here and they're watching, you talk about watching film and watching the yeah. drills, what, what's the, just the hardest thing to really nail down about a player? If he's BSing you or not, I guess. I mean, I, I was I was walking through the, um, you know, the walkway here from the JW, and I bumped into an old, into an old GM, asking what he was doing now, and he's 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 training, you know, these these players and getting them ready for interviews now. <laughs> so he's on the flip he's, side of it, and he's right. like, hey, he talked to another GM, and is like, I know you talked to this guy. I could tell you talked to this guy, <laughs> and it's just it's 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 kind of funny, um, but I I feel, and I told him, I said, you know what, I I think because I just circled names. I keep, keep it kind of simple. I just circled names like when I watch film, guys that pop. Like, you know, don't, don't overthink it. Like, if a guy comes in the room, has a presence, announces his name, shakes your hand, and looks you in the eye, and everybody feels that, that's easy. That guy, it's like when you throw on a film of a quarterback that's innately accurate, that's no matter what platform he's on, he's delivering the ball in a place that could be caught. Like, don't overthink it. And I feel like it's the same way when someone comes into the room. Don't start splitting hairs. If you really think a guy is a – you're feeling it and it's emanating from the type of person he is and it lines up with all the things your scouts said, then circle that guy and, and let him be a, a hard target. Did you ever have a guy that, that popped off on tape because you were watching for somebody else? You know, hey, I'm, I'm going to watch the film on X team because I want to see this player. And then you're like, whoa, wait a minute. This all other time. guy's jumping out at me. All the time, all the time. There was a corner I was watching the other day when I was doing a receiver, and I was like, oh, and I just wrote at the top of my paper, like, all right, number two, is he coming out? Just because, you know, the corners I looked at this year, like, I, you know, I, I like, you know, I like a, a good number of them, but um, this guy was really, his tempo, his physicality, and just the things I kept seeing in my periphery that I wasn't even trying to look at. Those are the guys you want to really asterisk and, and kind of, Make sure you make a notation and get back to him because if you're look if you're trying to focus on somebody else like you said, and this guy keeps getting in, in your grill, then you gotta you gotta take note of that. What what positions deepest in this draft do you think? Uh, I think there's not a lot of premier uh, linemen like that. Um, you know, you're like, okay, this guy's a top five guy or a top ten guy, but there's a lot of I think there's a lot of really good linemen in this draft. Um, Both sides of the ball. I think offense. I think offensive line. Um, and now, def- you know, the thing is, is that on the defensive side of the ball now, things are so multiple now. It's like, what do we call this guy? Is he a DN? Is he a three-four outside linebacker? Is he a hybrid guy? Is he a nickel rusher? You just like, say edge for everything. That's what I do. Well, that's what's happening. Any guy's an edge. That's what's He's happening. An edge. We went to it from a four-three to a three-four in in, in Minnesota, and it was kind of like when I got here, it was like it was a four-three for so long. Like the scouts, were like, what the what? Wait a second, these guys linebackers are on the on the on the line of scrimmage in there standing up and rushing the passer like you know what i mean so <laughs> right. there's there's definitely a transition with all that stuff we probably should ask you this before the interview but you got five minutes yeah okay we, we got to take a break i do want to get your thoughts uh, a little bit more on this quarterback class when we come back ryan grixon with us here live at the combine former colts general manager currently with the vikings uh, he's going to close out the show with us next Tired of living with chronic joint pain but want to avoid drugs and surgery? So was Robert Patterson. Home and auto insurance with Progressive. Touchdown savings, birdie goal. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Discount not available in all states or situations. You are listening to Kevin and Quarry 
on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. All right, one final time here. Back at the NFL Combine. Kevin Bowen, and Jake Query. Jake out of jail after not having his credential to start this okay. Friday morning. Yeah, that's good. Ryan Grigson saving us here to close things out. Ryan, I asked you a little bit earlier about Bryce Young. Um, I give you three quarterback traits. What are the three most important? you got to be a leader, obviously. I mean, the, the, the great ones can put their team on their back. Uh, I think the way the league is set up now, um, you know, you, you can say, well, if we have a solid guy and we build the something close to the 85 Bears defense, then maybe we have a chance. But I think in this day and age, I, I think that you need to have somebody that can really just put you on his back. And, and I think accuracy and the ability to make plays under duress is kind of the, the really rounds it out. Do you see multiple guys that check those boxes in this class? I do. I do. I think that uh, there's a good cluster of players that, you know, if I was doing it, that I would be looking really, really hard at. Um, every year, you know, no matter who you have, you're always looking at them, like every GM says. But, uh, you know, then you have to also look at the Brock Purdy's of the world. You know, I was I got a Super Bowl ring with Kurt Warner. I was working in the Arena League like two years prior to get in that ring that an Arena League quarterback that wasn't supposed to make the team his first year there as a three um, ends up winning. So they're, you got to figure out sometimes um, some of those guys later, too. There's, you know, Russell was in three. There's there's examples. You know, you wonder, too, like, if Trent Green never gets hurt, does Kurt Warner – I mean, do they see enough in practice where they're like, man, we got to elevate this guy. Yeah, Brady's the same right? thing. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. there's, there's, it's destiny sometimes. Um, in in today's day, 2023, which would you rather have, dynamic running back or elite tight end? It's starting to the, the running back thing is starting to is, is starting to kind of be the new in vogue, kind of like you know you couldn't take one and one for a while, and it's now kind of uh, creeping its way back because there's some guys in this draft that not only carry the rock but they're really good in the passing game and that's a big part of it right it, it, yeah. you got to be multi-dimensional yeah. and, it, and the thing about the tight end thing is is i have a son now it's a junior high school that's a a y tight end and i'm like dude if you can catch it consistently and you have length and you can actually win at the point of attack you're going to be so valuable because even in our league that tight end position they've grown into they've kind of grown into being just oversized wide receivers that can't win at the point of attack so uh you know if you find an elite tight end nowadays they usually can hold for like a one maybe a two count at the point of attack versus a defense runner outside linebacker but they're really a receiver well your son gets to play it in 40 degrees below zero weather for half the season too so that's <laughs> yeah. fun right <laughs> yeah yeah i've got five teenagers now well a 20 year old and four teenagers anybody so. playing hockey up there i remember they were involved in hockey yeah. back in the day isn't that crazy like we when we were in indy like my 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 oldest boy he he's uh playing uh quarterback in um lacrosse now as a freshman in college and he was a he was the hockey guy and none of the rest of them play hockey. And, you know, when I first got to Minnesota, you, you watch TV, and they're, they're put, there's 18,000 people watching high school hockey. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's yeah. like the Excel yeah. Center. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't, when I first saw it, I'm like, this is a high school game? I mean, we're talking 20,000 people oh, watching yeah. high school hockey. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's nuts. Uh, Ryan, thank you. You got it. I Good seeing you guys. I appreciate the time. I know it's a super busy week, and uh, greatly appreciate it. Good stuff. Appreciate it. it. All right, guys. That's Ryan Grixon with us here. Uh, thank you to everybody that joined us all week long here at the Combine. We are signing off. We'll be back in studio on Monday. Kevin and Quarry, one final time here at the Convention Center, 93.5.